Christ. Thank you. Miss Griffin? Members of the jury, Mr. Benedict is asking you to believe that Paul Stenbeck shot and killed his father in a jealous rage because he considered him a rival for Emily Stewart's affections. There is so much evidence and testimony to contradict this that I would feel entirely confident about your verdict, except for one thing. The fact that the defendant and Ms. Stewart tried to conceal certain facts surrounding the shooting. If they had not done this, if they had told the whole truth from the very beginning about the tragic events of that night, Paul Stenbeck would never have been indicted. As it is, the account they gave of the shooting created doubts in the minds of the grand jurors, as Ms. Stewart's testimony may have created doubts in your minds. I'm not in any way asking you to condone the cover-up they attempted. I ask you only to put it in perspective. They were not trying to cover up a crime of passion, as Mr. Benedict would have you believe. Rather, they were trying to keep their relationship from becoming public knowledge. And whatever you may think of this relationship, it is not the issue here. Paul Stenbeck is not on trial for any aspect of his personal life. He is on trial for murder. And of this act, he is innocent. He told the whole truth today. He shot his father because his father found the letters he had written Miss Stewart and in a blind rage he attacked her and tried to kill her. As you deliberate, I ask that you consider Paul's account of what happened and see how it explains many aspects of this case that may have troubled you. The 20 minute delay between the time of the shooting and the time Paul called the police. The attempt to force open the briefcase of James Stenbeck where they feared he may have put a letter. Miss Stewart's agitation on the witness stand. All of these facts are consistent with their fear of their relationship becoming public knowledge. None of them support the conclusion that Paul murdered his father. He shot his father because his father was going to kill Emily Stewart. Did he have reason to fear for Miss Stewart's life? I ask you to put yourself in his place. He had actually seen his father kill a man in cold blood and critically wound another. He knew his father was capable of murder. He knew that if he hesitated, it would be too late. And so he fired the gun to save Miss Stewart's life. And because of this desperate, courageous act, which will haunt him for the rest of his life, he is here today. And his future is in your hands. As the world turns. Thanks for coming by, huh? I, I don't mean that politely. I, I really appreciate it. Emily, we all make mistakes. You know, I've been through this before. And uh, I just want you to know that if you want to talk or anything. Well, Brock always said you were a good friend to him. I see what he means. Thanks. Well, I hope the worst is over for you and Paul, and I think it is. So, bye, Susan. Goodbye, Ellie. See you. Well, I didn't expect that. Sometimes when you're really up against it, people can surprise you. You really made a mess of things, huh? Yes, you have. But self-pity isn't going to help anybody. One of the things I learned at AA that's been very helpful to me is to take things one day at a time. And actually, I think you could start right this minute. Well... What about Paul? 
what's going to help him. Lastly, Mr. Benedict has made much of the fact that the defendant fired the gun three times, as if this were proof of a crime of passion. Ladies and gentlemen, this proves nothing of the kind. Only that Paul was in a highly emotional state when he fired the gun. And again, I ask you to put yourselves in his place and ask yourselves how you would have felt at that moment. The defendant is 19. The verdict you give in this case will affect his entire future. It is not in your power to undo the tragic events of that night. He'll carry the memory of it for the rest of his life. But it is in your power to give him justice. And I'm confident that once you've considered the testimony along with the evidence, you will do just that and return a verdict of not guilty. before Thanksgiving. Oh, Mama. Miles Standish just walked into my office. Well, it looks a lot like Kirk, yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Well, who are you supposed to be? A pilgrim. Am I making progress? Constantly. Come in. Can I bring Tom with me? Oh, of course. <clears throat> Where's Tom? Right here. Oh. And boy, is he cold. Wanted to make sure I didn't have to catch and pluck dinner this year and spoil Stephen and Linda Ann's rosy view of farm life. I see. Mama's never going to cook a frozen bird for dinner. You She's know never that. going to find out. Oh, We're yeah. going to thaw out this overgrown popsicle before we take it out to the farm. Where did you get this? Lucinda gave turkeys to all our building employees this year. And I made a bet with the elevator operator on the Notre Dame game. And you took that man's turkey, Mr. Big Shot? What could I do? I lost the bet. Let me tell you something. What? This is going to be the best Thanksgiving of my life. Everything is working out. I've got a great feeling about this meeting with Judd Peterson that Ellie and I are going to have today. Oh, the guy from sports today? That's right. Yeah. I'm going to get one of Olivia's swimsuits on the cover. It's something mm -hmm. Blake Stevens couldn't do, and I'm going to make him look like such a loser. You know, that's such a lovely thought for the Thanksgiving season. You know that? All right. All right. Well, how about thought. this thought? What's that? Stephen and Linda Ann are going to come here tomorrow. And I'm going to have my kids and the woman I love with me for Thanksgiving. That's something to be thankful for. Hmm. Okay. I love you. Today, and under cross-examination, he admitted that his relationship with Emily was sexual. And that's why James Stenbeck attacked her. Huh. I wonder how that's going to affect Paul's defense. I don't think it's going to help. You win the verdict, in. All right. Hang in there, buddy. Thanks, Greg. We got a lot going for us. Hank Elliott's testimony and Jessica's summation was just terrific. Yeah, sure was. All right, I'll see you later. I'm sorry that I wasn't honest with you sooner. So am I, Paul. I could have defended you a lot better had I known everything that happened that night. What do you think the jury's going to do? I don't know. But I'm glad you were honest in your testimony. I think that's going to count in your favor in the long run. You know, I've never asked you this before. Probably because I was afraid to know the answer. But if I do get convicted, what kind of sentence do you think I'll get? In our state, second-degree murder carries a sentence of no less than four years. No more than 15. 